are you reeling and dealing calcium salts during massive transfusion protocol? How important is calcium within the trauma lethal triad? When should we be giving calcium salts during MTP? Hello there farmers and friends, Mark with FarmWise. I'm a board certified emergency medicine pharmacist that makes clinical pharmacotherapy content on the social medias. Welcome to the Code Blue Debrief, a clinical pharmacotherapy YouTube and podcast series. We discuss emergency medicine and critical care pharmacology and disease state management. The topic of our episode today is going to be on calcium replacement in MTP. Massive transfusion protocol and hemorrhagic shock. Hemorrhagic shock is a life-threatening complication from acute blood loss and traumas. Rapidly identifying the bleeding source, adequate resuscitation, and arrangement for hemorrhagic source control are essential in maximizing positive outcomes in these patients. As with any patient, we've got to address and secure our ABCs during the primary survey. Addressing the airway, breathing, and circulation identifies the most immediate life-threatening complications. Blood fills the intravascular space carrying oxygen to the vital organs. Acute blood loss results in reduced intravascular volume, impaired oxygen delivery, and peripheral vasodilation. Blood loss means patient needs more blood. Limit your crystal load fluids from one to two liters to avoid hemodilution and allow for permissive hypotension. Massive transfusion is commonly defined as transfusions of 10 or more packed red blood cells within 24 hours. The goal is to limit complications and hypoperfusion until definitive surgical hemostasis. There needs to be a process of blood procurement, optimization, and safety, as well as essential staff during MTP. That's a lot of resources needed for a time-sensitive situation. Having MTP established within an institution has been associated with lower rates of mortality. Optimizing therapy is a part of MTP. Let's review the lethal triad and the role of calcium. Lethal triad, calcium, and MTP. When it comes to traumas, three common findings well known to contribute to negative outcomes include hypothermia, acidosis, and coagulopathy. This is also known as the lethal triad, where they have an important interconnecting relation to one another. Resuscitation is tailored by the lethal triad with continuous assessment and optimizing each component. Blood products contain citrate, which is used as an anticoagulant. Citrate binds to calcium, leading to hypocalcemia and negative physiologic sequelae within the lethal triad. Hypothermia slows down organ function, specifically hepatic metabolism of citrate. This contributes to worsening hypocalcemia, cardiac output, and eventual circulatory shock. Within coagulopathy, calcium is needed for clotting factor formation and platelet function. Acidosis just makes things worse as hydrogen ions compete with and may overcome calcium ions for binding sites, leading to worsening hypocalcemia and coagulopathy. Hellsuit and colleagues recently published a retrospective observational analysis this past year. Their objective was to determine the association between transfusion-independent ionized calcium levels and varying outcomes upon arrival to the ED. They included roughly 30,000 patients from a trauma registry in Germany. Criteria for inclusion was ED presentation with life signs on arrival. The first documented values at the time of initial blood collection was used for analysis. From their results, hypo and hypercalcemia, defined as an ionized calcium of less than 0.9 
and greater than 1.3 millimoles per liter, respectively, was associated with an increased incidence of coagulopathy, need for transfusion, and mortality at 6 and 24 hours, in addition to in-hospital mortality. That's before we even get started transfusing the patient. Calcium Salt Replacement Dosing Calcium abnormalities are associated with the worst outcomes and traumas. Severe hypocalcemia drastically reduces the likelihood of survival and blood transfusions make the deficiency worse. Stay on top of calcium salts with ongoing resuscitations. Generally, we'll give one gram of calcium chloride to maintain an ionized calcium of around one millimole per liter and or with each cooler which contains four units of blood products. In awake patients, peripheral administration will be painful since chloride is a vesicant. Consider diluting calcium chloride or giving equivalent calcium gluconate three grams in these patients. Robinson and colleagues completed a retrospective single-centered cohort trial in April of 2023. The objective was to assess the citrate to calcium ratio to reduce 30-day mortality. I listed the citrate per unit and mill equivalents of calcium per gram the authors reference for analysis on the table here. They included 308 patients who had MTP initiated in the ED, hospital, or pre-hospital transport. From their analysis, the ratio of grams of citrate to calcium mill equivalents was not associated with the mortality difference at 30 days. However, they did observe the lowest rate of mortality at a citrate to calcium ratio of two and three. This would suggest that calcium gluconate, one gram for every three units of packed red blood cells would be sufficient. Real and deal those calcium salts. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think is the optimal timing and dosing of calcium replacement during MTP. Thanks for staying to the end of the episode. If you enjoyed the content today, make sure to hit the follow and notification bell. For more firm facts deposits in your drug bank, check out another video on my page, share the farm facts with a friend, and I hope you learned something new.